I'm going to take just a few minutes of your time to create a sci-fi floor like you might see in a corridor in the game Doom or some other sci-fi game. All right, it's very straightforward. So I'm going to start by looking down from the top, pressing Shift A, Mesh Plane, go into Edit Mode and press S2 to scale it twice, Control R to drop an edge loop down the middle, and Control B to split it. I'm going to pull it out here so I have some side pieces something like that and P to break out that center piece there. Now I'm going to come in here and select this piece and I'm going to delete that and I'm going to mirror this one over. All right, now I'm going to select everything and we're going to give this some thickness. So I'm going to extrude downwards and X to get rid of those bottom faces. We won't need them. The only other thing is I want to select this piece and I'm going to move it out of the way a little bit so there's a bit of a gap between them. Okay, two for edge selection. Select the vertical edges on all of these pieces here. And if we have them all, we're going to bevel, control B and pull just a little bit and roll up so I have three edges in there. Shift Alt and click there, Shift Alt and click there. We'll bevel the top just like that. We're going to select the top of each of these and Control E, mark seam. And then I'm going to mark a seam here and on all of the corners. I'm pressing Control and Alt as I do this. That one, that one on over here and do that one. Control E, mark scene. That should be all that we need. Let's go to UV editing and with it all selected, let's press U, unwrap. However, it's probably flipped. Let's just recalculate inside. Double check that that's facing the right way. Yeah, it is. Let's go back in. Let me take them actually and pack them. And what I'll do is I'm going to take these pieces here. Maybe I'll rotate these 90 to fit in there. And take this and scale it down a little bit. Just to give myself a little bit of room from that one. Okay, so that's what we need right there. Unwrapped. Okay, good. So we're going to take that and we're going to export that as an FBX over in Substance Painter. Select that. And there it is. First thing I'm going to do is turn on some anti-aliasing here. Come to the texture set settings and bake the mesh maps. I'm going to do this at 1K. Uncheck ID and thickness. Come to curvature. And uh, I don't need to do that right now. Let's just go ahead and bake. All right, so now we're going to start designing. I'm going to press F6 to go into orthographic and snap to there. I'm going to turn on symmetry like this, and I'll get rid of that. And uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll add a material. Let's go to materials, metal, and I'm going to pull over aluminum pure, drop that in there. And uh, actually, let's go back to F5 so you can see it a little bit better. Perspective view. And let's come in here and I'll change this to a darker gray and I'm going to bring the roughness up and I'm going to add a filter and the filter I'll add here is this matte finish and uh, you can play with these things as much as you want I just want to show you the general technique so we've got that and then I'll change my HDR to that one so it's a little bit easier to see sometimes a little bit nicer all right, so there's our, our base sort of metal layer. Okay, so we're going to create a fill and a black mask and a paint. And you can see that I've got symmetry on here and I've snapped in orthographic. All right, so what I want to do here is I'm gonna come over to my alphas and I'm gonna search for square stripes. This one should come with your Substance Painter. So there it is come into the properties, scroll down, and I'm going to change the border width to zero. 
I'm going to change the stripes bending to zero, the tiling to one, and then I'm going to get the length that I want, and then I'm going to decrease the width. So I get a thing like this. Okay, something like that. Now I'm going to draw down this way, but I want separate pieces, so I'm going to adjust the spacing. So this is a bit trial and error. I'm going to bring that out to around, I'll try 25. I've got the symmetry on. I'm going to click and I'm going to hold shift and control and pull down to about there and we'll see. And that's actually not bad for the number of them. But you can see I've got sort of a small space here and a bigger space there. So we're going to add another filter, not a level, so we'll use that later probably. Add a filter, transform down here in the bottom and I'm going to move the X. You can hold shift, move a bit slower, and just try to even it out. That's pretty good. Okay, so I've got two rows of these things because of the symmetry that I had on there. All right, that's the transform filter. Next, now let's go ahead and change this. So let's change this to a black color because these are sort of holes. Metal, metallic all the way up, roughness all the way up, and I don't need normal right now height all the way down. A little bit hard to see those holes. Let's press F5 to go back into perspective. All right, so what I'm going to do on top of that is I'm going to add another filter, and it's going to be the blur filter, and it's looking better already. Just going to up that a little bit more so we start to see that, that white. Something along that line. Okay, so I'm going to press F6 again. Snap back in. So let's do another detail on here. So we've got this, I'll just call that stripes. And this is my metal. And I'm probably gonna swap in a different metal later, we'll see. I'm gonna add another fill, black mask and a paint. And I'm going to clear this and I'm gonna search for square. And I want just the regular square. I'll use that one square rectangle. You can use any rounded ones if you have uh, you know, a round square. I'm not sure if you do. If you do, you can use that. I'll try this and then we'll see what we can do. Uh, so what I'd like to do is make that smaller. And I want to put like uh, something there. And so what I'm going to do is press X to clear. And this is why I wanted a little bit of space so it's a little easier. And I'm just going to erase that part so I have just that there. All right, so I'll come back here now and I'm going to actually get rid of the color, get rid of the normal, metal, <laughs> and roughness, and just use height and drop it down so we see this. Now, on the mask, on top of the paint, I'm going to add a blur. So filter, blur, and I'm just going to blur it just a little bit. It'll just make it show up a little bit and sort of round it a little bit. You can go crazier with this, increase the blur like that, and then you can add a levels and try to sh sharpen it up a little bit. Maybe I'll do it like that. Okay, perhaps the height is a bit too low and so I'll put it around halfway. And now I would like, um, I'll just call that indent. I'd like another one down here, sort of balance, balance it out. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna duplicate this one. And I wanna move this and the way to do that is on here to add a transform filter. So come down to here and then figure out which one of these is going to work. So I'm going to drag it down here and try to get it kind of even. And that's pretty good, I guess. So we got both of those in there. Let's do another layer here and I'll do color and height. I'll make the color dark and I'll drop the height about halfway. Let's add a black mask and a paint and then get something like some kind of a bolt. I'm gonna type in circle or start typing that. Go for the circle, empty square, make it smaller. And maybe we'll come over here and uh, just adjust the square size. Make that a bit smaller, so. Eh. Let's try that, let's just do one there. I've still got symmetry on, one there. That might be a little bit large, but we're just illustrating the process here. All right, you can go as crazy as you want. You can add as much details as you want to. But let's say that's what I wanted to have on my floor panel. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export this as a normal. 
So all this height information will be changed. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to call this uh, Doom. I'll call it Doom. Doom Normal. Then I'm going to come over to File, Export Textures. And in Output Templates, I have a template called Normal Export, where I've taken one of these other PBR Metallic Roughnesses and just deleted everything but the normal. Notice that it's OpenGL. So that's what I'm using, and I've saved that. So I'm going to change this to Normal Export. And I'm going to put this in Textures Doom. There we go. I just want to export the normal. And there it is, Doom Normal. I called it Doom Normal, and it's a normal PNG. All right, cool. Now I'm going to import that. So Textures Doom, there's the normal. Import that. I'm going to define it as a texture just to my current session. So there it is. Now what I want to do is I want to drag this over the old normal. Now everything's doubled up, so I can actually close all these. And you'll see, without even any of these on, I have now the impressions of all my stuff on here. This is, this is what I wanted. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bake the mesh maps, but not with the normal. I don't want to overwrite the normal. I want to use the information here, and I want it to affect my other maps. So I'm going to do that. But I'm also going to switch this on curvature to from generate from mesh to generate from normal map and bake. All right, so now we have this. We can turn the metal back on, and you can still see the effects. Let's go to F5. You can still see the effects without any of the other stuff on there. So now what I'm going to do, though, is I want some of that color stuff. So I'm going to turn the bolts back on but come in here and just turn off the height. I don't need it anymore. I just want that black color in there. I just kind of like it. All right, I'm going to come to my indent. There's really nothing else to use from my indent. There's no color in there. But in my stripes, come to the stripes, turn off the height. Okay, so now I have that black in there. And now if I come up and use some kind of a generator, it should affect my, my texture more because of the, what I did with the normal here. But I, just before I do that, I'm going to consider something else. I'm going to turn that off, create a fill layer, maybe only use color. And I'm going to search all for metal. And if you watch one of my recent videos, I've used this metal 024 2K color before for, it's from Ambient CG. I'm going to drag that into the base color and just see if I like that better as a more sort of neutral kind of metal. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some effects on top of this. So I'm going to create a fill layer, just white, with a black mask and a generator. Let's try curvature. And you can see that it affects my alphas much better than, than if they were just height. All right, and now I can tone this down. I can do whatever I want to. Uh, I'll just lower this and just so I have a little bit of light in there and the same goes with uh, with dirt so that's curve I'll just call it curve just do this quickly color and roughness let's say for the dirt bring that up give this whatever color you want for your dirt I'll just do that and let's just try the dirt generator and see how that does let's pay special attention to these things okay there you go, you get some dirt inside there. Because I'm going to be arraying this a number of times in Blender, you do have to be careful about the generators, especially the dirt. If you get very specific pattern on there, it'll be re repeated and, and it may not look very good. But let's start with that, okay? I'm just going to call this now Doom uh, Floor Panel. Normally you should save your file. I'm going to come up to Export Textures. And now I'm just going to use a regular template, just a PBR metallic roughness, and I'll put it in there, Texture Doom, and Export. And I get all my typical files. Select the principal BSDF, and Shift Control T. Okay, let's find Textures Doom. 
this one all the way down to that one principal texture set up and it's gone on those hang on I want to get rid of this displacement I tend to not use that and I just want it on there as well okay so let's come back here turn this on keep in the wrong keys and you're starting to see what I've got here now um, I'm going to go ahead and apply the mirror and I'm going to join those together so it's just all one piece and I'm going to generate an array but I will put 1.02 we'll try 1.02 maybe 1.01 in my array and I'll do another array but I'll do 1.01 in the Y and zero out the X and then I'll just increase the count a couple of times so you start to get a sense of, of what's going on here now what I generally like to do is just to sort of test this is take a few lights point lights put them in maybe make them a strength of like 50 or something and do like a blue and then I'm going to come here and I'm just going to shift D and G drag it wherever I'll make one sort of green shift D G I'll make this one kind of yellowish and maybe a one more slightly different position kind of blue uh, and then we'll come over here and we'll turn on scene lights turn everything else off and then experiment with these different HDRs now I tend to like that one quite a lot but for this I might switch over to this one okay and you can see what we're coming up with and that looks pretty neat so again you know you can put in as much detail as, as you want on these if I come over to my shader and I switch it to alpha blend all right and then I come to my texture set settings and I add the opacity channel I can come over to where my stripes are this is my main layer for the stripes turn on the opacity and then drop that down and now it's see-through all right uh, the only thing is you would have to um, export with a different um, template one with uh, opacity and I'll just show you that quickly uh, I have one here with opacity uh, it's just this okay it's just got opacity down here so if I do that and just overwrite those but it's gonna add the opacity I'll come back here to shading and I have to build this again just real quick so I'll just grab these and delete them and come up here select that shift control T just grab these again and it'll plug in the opacity I just want to get rid of the displacement and as you can see you you can see through that uh, right in case you wanted to do something where there's a a lower level or you wanted to put a black plane underneath it maybe a little bit deeper down but I think it would look really cool if you had pipes and stuff underneath so it's very easy to do um, I have arrayed some of this geometry a bit so there is a little bit of geometry here and if we have a look at the statistics you can see that it's not too high to make something that's pretty impressive in terms of you know what we used to do in geometry right we would do booleans for all this and it would be a nightmare and you know here we can easily swap materials down here and uh, you know and be ready to go with a with a different look alright so that's going to be that take care